This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Get real. No. No. Nope. Y'all, y'all, y- just this is stop. a sham. It's finally here. Drum roll. Welcome to DBL. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Yeah. Erica just starts shaking when the show starts. A little shoulder reaction. It's that, and when I, I get something really good to eat, I'm like, yes. <laughs> What'd you eat? <laughs> No, oh, no, it's from the show. I get excited, or like when I get food, like certain foods, I start eating, and it. That's what I mean. So, like, if I gave you a plate right now, what would make you do that? Uh, f- French fries. Oh, <laughs> pretty yeah. easy. Yeah, yeah. Pretty easy. good answer. <laughs> See, that then what good. would happen if I gave you curly fries? Would you like flip out? Is there cheese? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's definitely. Oh good. yeah. <laughs> All right, so all right. Good. Let's get to it. Welcome to DBL. Some of the Friends cast posted emotional tributes on social media to their friend Matthew Perry, who passed away last month. Has it been that long mm. already? Jennifer Aniston shared his behind the her behind the scenes pic of her and Matthew. She wrote about her grief and said they loved him deeply as he was part of their DNA and chosen family. She also shared this text between them, where he wrote, "Making you laugh just made my day. Mm. Made my day." His on screen. Uh, roommate Matt LeBlanc said it was an honor to share the stage with Matthew. David Schwimmer posted his favorite picture of the show from them. <laughs> I remember that episode. And talked about Matthew's generous heart and impeccable comic timing. And Courtney Cox revealed that that Monica and Chandler were only supposed to have a one night fling in London. Do we all remember this? But it was the audience's reaction from an earlier take that made the writers develop it into a love story. Let's watch. You think you knew I was here? (laughs) Okay, your turn. No, no, beginning. He told me to say it, he did. Wow, talk about like a pause for applause. I you could know. tell that they were taken back by yeah. it a little bit and just trying to sit in totally. that moment. But I mean, it's, you know, obviously this is a scripted show, but in front of a live audience, you don't know what's going to hit until you say it. And I, I'm sure that they were just as taken back. I'm sure they thought this would be a quick moment, but I'm glad that they went with it rather than just being rigid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have to say two things. One, I'm re-watching Friends right now, so it's so interesting. I think a lot of people A are. lot of people yeah. are. And I started re- before Matthew Perry died, but I have to say, that show is nothing without Matthew Perry. Mm. That show is Zippo without him. He is a constant anchor that makes the show every few seconds funnier. The second thing I'll say is he was madly in love with Jennifer Aniston, madly, for years. And he always said making her laugh was like the best thing in the world and the very end of her text today her uh, Instagram she said don't worry he said making you laugh always made my day and she said don't worry Maddie you made my day and I just think that's a really beautiful thing for someone she knew he held such dear feelings for her so yeah, very I, special I think that when you're talking about like a tribute like that of course you know the idea of Matthew Perry not being in friends is like not an option for it to go on but what made that show so special is that any of them yeah. not being a part of the ensemble wouldn't have worked um, the same way. And so when I see things or, you know, when things like this happen, especially with ensembles, it's like it's so rare. And that's why I feel like what we have is so special because it's so rare to really need each other the way that bi- great ensembles do. And I'm not comparing us to friends, although. Yes. better version <laughs> uh, but you know when you are a part of something like that over the course of 10 seasons and for us we're in season seven it's so intertwined that it does become something that is as strong as family erica i'll, I'll say this and i don't want to cut you off but as we were running that 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 promo package i was just like oh my god what if one of us passed I thought, away I, yep. that's and I, I, I thought that too. And i was like i don't think i could post and I don't th- think that even I am aware or able to really understand the depths in which I'm connected to you guys because it's been every day for so long that yeah. I almost don't remember my life without it. So with them having that kind of success, but then behind the scenes and parties and babies and marriages. And recovery. And, uh, yeah, it's just like it's a b- bond that I just can't imagine. 
Yeah. Yeah. I just, it's weird because when I watch that clip, I see Chandler, right? And I'm like, I can't believe Chandler passed away. And us as viewers, and even the viewers out there viewing us, they just picture us as like, a person on television, right? And you don't know what's happening in his real life. Obviously, there was a lot of trauma mm -hmm. and heartbreak and things like that. You don't see that when you're watching Friends. Right. You just see, I can't believe Chandler died. And I really wish like, we could just take a pill as Americans and see each other. Like, I'm going to take this pill, and after you pass away, all those flaws that I thought you had, it doesn't matter. I, at a, the core, you were really a good guy, and you were really a good good woman. And that's the way we should look at each other, as if we all passed away. We hold every, these grudges and things people did a long time ago over everybody's heads, and we're here to chop them down on social media. It's like, Life's short. Yeah, what a waste enjoy of time. those moments. Even if you don't know that person, enjoy what they're giving to you through entertainment or in your real life through family. Oh, you know? Beautiful. Well said, bro. Yeah. I'm not saying anything right. after that. I don't know. I'm maybe a little emotional today. Dang. All right. <laughs> the Brady Bunch star Bra uh, Barry Williams gave it his all last night on Dancing with the Stars, which did a tribute to the late Whitney Houston. Barry, who is 69, ripped open his shirt during a dance off with Jason Mraz. Okay, oh. Barry. You yeah, right Barry. <laughs> Barry did win the dance-off, which gave him three extra points. I, I would have gave him ten Dude, for that. Dude, he looks great. But that wasn't enough to save him from elimination. <gasps> Barry. Brady. They eliminated him yeah. after that? I know. Too I little, too late. That was I, great. I don't know. I, what, he looks Al? great. I don't know. 69? No, I'm not. I'm not hating. Oh, whoa! It, I didn't it, know you were saying that. Go ahead. You are. Oh, whoa! You think I'm just shouting out that. sexual position? Well, like, all right, go ahead. It could just be a number, Jeff. Uh, <laughs> oh, I, thanks, Al, for thinking logically. <laughs> I, what a misstep by me. I wasn't. I wasn't hating it on Barry. Actually, the complete opposite. I, everybody's talking about he. He lost. I was like, didn't look like it to me. When he ripped open his shirt, he yelled up to the heavens. And it's like, if you have a moment like that in your life, if that, that <laughs> did yell up Your <laughs> whole life is leading up to that moment. No, what a bunch of judges have to say after that means nothing to me. I just ripped my shirt open at 70, and everybody's like, that's what's up. Al, that's hey, not the correct age. He's the winner. <laughs> 69. That's awesome. <laughs> Him. I think Children. that's great. How did he get past? I mean, Mraz was just like. Ugh. Well, I mean, oh. that it would take a lot. Michael Jackson, you'd be like, mm. right? Barry Williams just ripped off his shirt. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I like that he went for it though. Good for him. Go I for it. Go yeah. For when it. you're gonna, everybody's like, oh, isn't that embarrassing? Who cares? No, he did. Go great. for it. That's a that's an iconic moment. Mm -hmm. I don't know about an iconic it. moment. I oh, said it. I, I was the first to say, okay, Barry, that says everything I need <laughs> to Erica, say. Erica, you're not giving gravity to the iconic moment we just saw. Yeah. Dude, Al, that wasn't iconic. Gave mo shout that to was the heavens. a that that was a real time reaction and that reaction wasn't like what it was okay Barry yeah, is he gay like Greg Brady the oldest yeah yeah good for him all right Brady Bunch. Right you didn't know I didn't know which Brady he was I get sometimes the boys I Could get you a little name all the Brady kids Greg Robert and you Harry. really can't name the Brady kids oh, Greg don't you go to trivia yeah Greg they don't do well clearly <laughs> the Greg Albert and Harry <laughs> Are you serious? No, I, I can't. Greg. Wow. I thought you were good at trivia. Peter. Peter and Bobby. Yes. Come on. You didn't know Bobby. I did. No, you I didn't. Was wow. About that too. Dude, Alice. What was the butcher's? Sam. Sam the butcher. How do you know the go. butcher's I, name? I, I Coming know. up on DBL. Everybody at home is playing right I now. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Coming up on DBL, we're talking with the one and only Tim Allen and his daughter, all about their spinoff series for the Santa Bobby. Claus, and how Donna Kelsey is poking fun at all the attention her boys are getting lately. That's pretty funny. We're gonna talk about it next. No, Carol. Wait, Car Susan Brady? Yeah. Carol. Carol Brady, and who's the father? Mm, Mike. Yeah. Mike Brady? Yeah. yeah. What, what did he do for a living? He was an insurance. No. Man. Architect. He was an architect. <laughs> Definitely. Remember he had his office? The architect. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Who got hit in the? Who was the sad girl? Jan or Mar J Jan? Jan. 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 Tori. Mar oh, let me yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't Tori have middle sibling For vibes, sure. yeah, but she's okay. not? Yeah. You know all the actors. Tori mean? totally Does anyone know all the younger actors. siblings? Thank vibes. you very much. She's a younger sibling. She very very Tori is a younger no. sibling. That's for nice. Through. They you. the youngest. That's for nice. Baby. Might have got. But she's baby also sibling. the youngest uh, on our team. That's exactly right. I'm the baby of the whole group. Did you know that? I'm the I'm the youngest of all of them by like years. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like decades. They're so old. Yeah. You know who we interviewed? Cindy on my radio show. She's turned into somewhat of a con uh, uh, conspiracy theorist. Yes. What, uh, what, radio, radio, what a radio show? show. LATalkRadio.com. I know that show. It was good. Show. I listened to she it. She sure did. I, I did that show once. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah. Well, Is it, it just like an open station? Um, it's an internet, internet radio yeah. show and mm -hmm. it's... It's interesting. Very it was prominent. really interesting. It was yours? No, I actually was hired to be the co-host oh, for that. someone. And it was... Kind of like this show, Your Hairstylist? My, your producer? My producer. No, I don't say that. My <laughs> producer? You say it all the time. I, I just made fun of you yesterday for saying that. Oh, if I do, Look I Look how she's be. trying to whip her hair. So <laughs> I'm really trying to hair. Yeah, you are. You're like, what did you say, Jeff? <laughs> when she... Oh, you're going to mess it, it up. You had uh, your friend in town. You're like, this is my hairstylist, and this is my wardrobe stylist. I'm like, I thought we all had the same one. He's he's right. He's always He's checking me. He's right. Our hairstylist and our Rob, our camera guy, shout out. He wasn't just naming the Brady's, he was naming their real names. Is that right? Yeah. Oh. Camera. Big, shout out, Rob. Big shout, Rob. Hey. All right, welcome back to DBL. Donna Kelsey is talking all about, or taking all the attention of her sons and Taylor Swift in stride. She reposted this meme showing a young Travis and his brother Jason. There it is. Yeah. Could you believe those are the Kelsey brothers with the caption? One of these guys is a finalist for Sexiest Man Alive, and the other is dating Taylor Swift. There's still hope for you. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny stuff. Meantime, <laughs> on their podcast, Travis and Jason talked about Taylor changing the line in her song the other night. Two Karma is the guy on the Chiefs coming straight home to me. Take a look. Yeah, no, I had no clue. Might have had a little bit of a clue. Definitely when I heard it come out of her mouth, still shocked me. I was like, oh, sh she really just said that. All right. You were so shocked you left Scott hanging. <sighs> Scott's over here looking for a high five. Mr. Swift, I apologize, big guy. I never miss a high five, too. Big high five guy. It's the most electric thing you can do in, at an event. He even had your chief lanyard on. Got him over here to the good side, baby. What are we doing, Scott? One by one, getting all the good ones to come on over, man. <laughs> and if that wasn't enough, Kelsey Overkill, Travis and Jason dropped a Christmas song today. It'll be featured on an album with Patti LaBelle what? and some other Eagles <laughs> Hold up, players. What? Let's take a listen. Miss Patti LaBelle? You were handsome, you were pretty, you're the king of South Philly. When the band finished playing, they howled out for more. The letters were swinging, all the joints they were singing. We fought on a corner, then danced through the night. The sound of the silver rage. We're going to let a chief steal the show? Hell no. Those were ringing out for Christmas Day. I no, uh, I where's Miss Patty? Patty isn't a part of that. Yeah, where's Patty LaBelle? She comes in later. Was that a little <laughs> homage? Was that a little, what, if you guys were, I know the movie, what I'm thinking of, but do you know that was a little homage to a Christmas movie? You know what I'm talking Charlie about? Charlie Brown, maybe? No. no. I'm sure. You're talking about the Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer? Oh, with a little stop like, motion? I want to be a dentist. You know, remember that? <laughs> Nobody knows that no. movie in Rudolph's nose? Okay, go back to Patty LaBelle. <laughs> I love that movie. I want to know like this where Aunt Patty is and what's going on here. Yeah, that I'm, was I'm assuming bit. she's on the track, Erica. I think her people would have some issues if they were like, trust us, Patty's here. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> LaBelle Lo Ring. Her. That's really But yeah, funny. I mean, look so, at... I think it's a whole album is what I'm hearing right yeah. now. So she might not be on this track. Okay. <laughs> that okay. makes more sense. I, I will it say, does look like Rudolph. I, I will right. say this, and it's, it, you know, going back to the meme, which I did think was funny, but, uh, you know, to, to see where Travis is, he got kicked out of school for marijuana. It looked like his career was over. Yep. And famously, his brother, who already played for the Eagles, called Andy Reid and gave him a second chance. And look at him. Yep. And I hope, I really, it sounds so corny, but like to give people a second chance and not just throw a kid away over something like this, stuff young people do. And, and look, may I look add, where they Al, go, look where they can go, please. Let, may I add to that? I totally agree with what you said. And then he had a little dream of writing a friendship bracelet with his number on it. He shot a shot, which is another inspirational oh thing he God. did. And look where he ended up. <laughs> the tent with Mr. Swift in the VIP. That's not a little I dream. I think we're though. talking about two different things. Yes. I'm, I'm <laughs> yes. talking about throwing someone's life away. You're talking about making a you, you don't understand him bracelet. making that stupid friendship bracelet got the attention it? of everybody else that started this whole thing, and he had the intention of just giving her his number. Right. That's a manifestation. But, but, but Tori, <laughs> what? It, 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 if he had, I think the point is, if he hadn't gotten the second chance, he wouldn't be the football player and star athlete that he is. Right. Because anybody could have a dream and make a friendship I'm, bracelet to give to somebody. Right. But it's not going to work unless you travel. All right, we got to go. Yeah, we got to go. It's not the same thing. It's the third we'll chance. Right Give me a break. It's a simple slogan. Leave the leaves. Promising a magic leave bullet leaves. for leave a better garden. Leaves. Want more fireflies in your yard? Leave the leaves. Want fewer mosquitoes near your house? Leave the leaves, surprisingly. Want to never spend money on mulch again? Believe it or not, leave the leaves. So does less mean more when it comes to yard maintenance this fall? We asked Bobby Modern, director of horticulture at Duke Gardens and the U.S. Department of Agriculture. There's a lot of good reasons to, to leave those leaves and not to clean up every single leaf on your in your property. Modern says that's because leaves on the ground are part of the circle of life. Microorganisms, they break these leaves down uh, in the winter and during the spring. And basically when they do that, they're providing nutrients to refeed all of these plants that live in the forest. Fallen foliage also serves as a haven for insects and creatures that keep pests down and boost pollination near you. Great spangled fritillaries and woolly bear caterpillars, you know, tuck themselves in leaves. Uh, Luna moths and swallowtail butterflies disguise their cocoons to look like leaves to blend in really well. So we can verify, yes, leaving fallen leaves in your yard helps plants and boosts wildlife. Now, what if you want to leave the leaves while still keeping a tidy look to your yard? Modern recommends blowing leaves into your planting beds, then wetting them with a hose to keep the wind from carrying them back onto your lawn. Then at the end of the season, he says to cover the leaves with any mulch you prefer. That acts as a weight. It holds the leaves in place. And it also helps to kind of start that decomposition process a little faster by acting as a blanket. Welcome back to DVL. Last year, the Santa Claus franchise got a spin-off series, and this year, the Santa Clauses are back. Earlier, we caught up with Tim Allen and his daughter, Elizabeth. Take a look. Please welcome to the show, Tim Allen and Elizabeth Allen Dick. Woo! Hello, you two. Uh, Tim, I wanted to ask first, we want to say hello from your hometown of Denver. Hello. Do you get to visit hey. the Mile High City often? Yes. Yes, coming in February, actually, to do a concert there. Wow. Well, maybe he will be on the panel. Let's oh, yeah. cut this and send to his people. Mm -hmm. All right, now let's talk about the Santa Claus <laughs> franchise. It's really become a family affair for you, but why did you want to cast your real daughter as your TV daughter? I, I say it briefly. The idea wasn't that her mom and I had no intention of this. I just wanted to surprise her and have her come on and do a, a, a wave as an elf in the background. Cute. Come by in that <laughs> background, and she had to read because she was going to say something. And every time she read, they go, "Could she read another one?" And as it got in there, I bowed out of it. I said, "I don't want to have. I don't want to influence that." So she came in and she read it, and she got the job, and it's been. Wonderful blessing, because I said not only, but she did a really good job, 
and she's with some really accomplished uh, young actors, and she's learning from them and respectful yeah. for them, but also bringing something to the table. So, hey. Her own merit. We love Good that. For her. Yeah. We love that. Well, Elizabeth, I have to ask you, because your daddy was Santa to millions of kids before <laughs> you were even a thought. So do you remember <laughs> watching him as Santa the first time, and did you ever think that he might be the real guy? Ooh. So oh, this story is actually kind of, it's funny and it's like, doesn't really make any sense um, at the same time. But we, I think the first time I watched it, I was like five or six years old. And I don't think, I think they had explained it to me like, okay, like he it's acts on the screen. Yeah, it's a movie. It's, it's, a it's movie. not, it's not, and it's not real, but he's, you know, he's kind of like a worker for the real Santa. So they kind of had staged it that way. And the first time I watched it, um, I cried. Oh. I don't know why. Yeah, but it, wasn't, I saw, it wasn't a good cry. It was, we I wanted saw, to make each other went, this is not going no, well. I, I don't know why. I, I saw him on the screen. I was like, this isn't right. Looked at I don't me, know. looked at the screen. Oh, like, I don't know why. Uh, 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 yeah, no, it wasn't. And then uh, mad at me because I left Charlie in the yeah, wood. Why'd you leave the boy? And I, remember? That's Santa. Now, once you go into school and telling people that I was Santa, this is a bad idea. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Yes. <laughs> I love yeah. the I love the dynamic already. I know. So Tim, you're very well known, obviously, for the famous grunt, <gasps> right? <laughs> I noticed, or maybe I'm mistaken. Did you sneak that into the Santa Claus? Was that improvised, or was that in the script? Uh, no, we. I, I've always the original director, John Pasquin. We've 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 snuck in home improvement references mm -hmm. to almost everything I've done. I believe in uh, uh, Toy Story, the second one, there's a Binford toolbox behind t one of the <sighs> acts. We've, we've snuck in a lot of that, which is where my career began it, doing the grunt, which really quickly is a, I, I did a show for Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company at a sales banquet when I was the first comic. I was dying on stage because it was a banquet and all I heard was men going, ah, rah, 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 rah. <laughs> Out of frustration, I just started doing that on stage. I went, oh, 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 oh. And the men in the room went, hey, that's funny stuff, kid. That's, I that's love like, those little oh, Easter that's eggs. That's great. That is, oh, but I'm a comic as well. And those banquets, all you hear is the silverware. Yeah, the so, yeah, clanking, I had, yeah. Sorry, I yeah, had a little tiny flashback. The back of people, because it's the round <laughs> tables. I see the back. What am I doing for a living? <laughs> <laughs> I got to ask you this, Tim. Christmas Eve is Santa's biggest night. But in real life, do you, as a father, get your presents early or are you one of those last minute shoppers? I, I, I'm really good at it over the years and it's because of Jane, my, my wife. She's really good at this. Mm -hmm. Wherever we travel and we say, God, that'll be good for this. This will nice. be good. She's really, we'll pick up stuff way ahead of time. The difficulty is sometimes we wrap them and go, what was in that one? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Early, and sometimes you, you're open a box. So here's one for you, honey. She goes, why'd you get me a bar of soap? <laughs> oh, that was for the guys at the shop. <laughs> so the only difficulty with early stuff is you can't wrap them too early. It's so yeah. true. I've learned the hard way. Mm -hmm. DBL Nation, you got to watch the Santa Claus is streaming now on Disney Plus and catch Tim on tour this February 2nd and 3rd in both of his hometowns, Denver and Detroit. Nice. Tim and Elizabeth, what a treat. Thank you so much. Congratulations on all the success. Way to go, Elizabeth. And Merry Christmas. We'll so be cool. right back. Mazel tov. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> has almost 8 million views and young girls are commenting on the video saying they are nervous and throwing away their sports brawls. So I spoke to a doctor who verified if wearing a sports bra can actually cause breast cancer. If you wear your sports bra all the time, you need to stop. Kelly Hayes on TikTok is urging people to listen to this message after her doctors found a lump in her breast. They told her wearing a sports bra can cause fluids to get stuck in her lymph nodes. When you have compression on them all the time, it gets like extra fluid because it can't go anywhere. Now people on social media are panicking, trying to figure out if this can increase the risk of being diagnosed with breast cancer. So let's verify, can wearing a sports bra cause breast cancer? Our source is Dr. Tim Martindale, owner of a family practice physician in Waco. He says sports bras are actually great to wear. If you don't wear a bra, there is an element of sagging of breast, of lengthening of the ligaments, which tends to be permanent. So if you like to have the best shape and health of your breast, support for them is a healthy thing. Martindale says the woman in the video never got breast cancer. It was something completely different. It was a nodule that was harmless. The lumps Kelly talked about do not deal with breast cancer at all. Some people are concerned about something called lymphedema, 
where you can develop a thicker secretions that build up and cause troubles. Number one, that has nothing to do with breast cancer, but it does have something to do with breast health. Martindale says there are ways you can improve your breast health. The idea of fluid pockets, that can be helped with the massage and the sports bras don't make that worse. And for those concerned, you can decrease your chances. Weight loss and staying away from alcohol and tobacco or cigarettes or nicotine. Martindale encourages those to do research before trusting what you see online. Look at a reputable site for medical information or ask your physician. So we can verify it's absolutely false. Our experts say wearing a sports bra is safe. There's no increased risk for breast cancer and they're more healthy than not okay. More than 19,000 car crashes are reported to police every day on American roads. As electric vehicles become more popular, the chance they'll be involved in an accident is also going up. Several Verify viewers reached out to ask about posts like these that claim first responders can't use the jaws of life to cut through an EV because they risk being electrocuted. Let's verify. Can emergency responders use the jaws of life on electric vehicles? Our sources are the National Fire Protection Association, Safe Electricity, Chief Michael O'Brien with the International Association of Fire Chiefs, and EV emergency response trainers Dan Fish and Michael Smith. EVs use high voltage batteries to power your drive. If firefighters cut directly into the battery or cables that connect the car's electrical components, then there is a risk of electrocution. But all of our sources say there is no record of this happening anywhere in the world. Smith told Verify, quote, it is entirely possible to use extrication tools on electric, hybrid electric, plug-in hybrid electric, and hydrogen vehicles, unquote. Manufacturers provide guidance to emergency responders that highlight safe places to use extraction tools, like the jaws of life. So yes, emergency responders can use the jaws of life on electric vehicles. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. This November, hey! Sandals is giving thanks with an all-inclusive vacation giveaway to Sandals Resorts. Watch DBL every day for a word of the day. Then enter at dailyblastlive.com slash sandals for your chance to win a four-day, three-night escape for two to any Sandals Resort of your choice. The winner will be announced on DBL November 22nd. Today's Sandals word of the day is snorkel. Welcome back. If you need to get away but can't, self-care can take place right at home. We're talking about it in today's tips, sponsored by Jacuzzi. Here are some things to consider when planning an at-home wellness retreat. Why would you retreat if you're at home? Huh, just plan it. Plan out your self-care routine prior to getting started and prepare your space so if a relaxing bath and reading a book is on your agenda, you have everything you need already set up. All you need is the water and the book. If you want to start your remodel, Jacuzzi can help you do it the right way with a spa-like experience. Jacuzzi offers an unmatched, stress-free remodeling process. Visit jacuzzibathremodel.com or call 800-990-6834. Yeah, you know when you made it, Jeff, is when you have that board that goes across yep. the wow. tub. I, didn't even, I thought that was just for movies. No, you just have the incense on there. A little. The I feel like Erica has that where she's got some dried like cranberries candle. in a glass bowl. Well, then they have a little hook you put your glass on. Why wouldn't I have that? 